Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I am here with a very special guest. Uh, you've seen some of the people from the Duck Dynasty series on Life Today. Well, we've got Missy Robertson, who is married to Jace, and has a book out, a uh, just new book, brand new book, called Bless, 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 which is a great title, a very positive title. And I think it's interesting because it hasn't always been a situation that you would say is blessed. So, Missy, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Well, first of all, why the title? Well, you know, they would love for us to talk about, Tyndale loved for us to talk about our blessings. And I really even sign all my emails, blessings, because we just feel like we have been very blessed in our life. And so we talked about, um, you know, different title options. But with three kids, we decided blessed, blessed, blessed. Then Jace had the idea of putting the dot, dot, dot before the last blessed. He said those dots are the guts of the book. <laughs> and it turned out to be he was right. Yeah. So, yeah well, explain, give us, tell us what that Well, means. it's because, you know, we, we kind of had a normal, what we, what we would consider a normal courtship, a normal marriage. Uh, we worked, both of us worked. And then we got pregnant with our first child. No big issues. Loving, beautiful energetic, bouncing baby boy. And then a couple years later, the same thing, had another boy, no problems, beautiful boys, and then started to want another child. And that's where a lot of the issues occurred. Uh, miscarriage, tubal pregnancy, and a lot of heartache. And then just because of all of that, what happened during that procedure, um, we had to make some decisions and didn't know if we could become pregnant again and pretty much just left it up to God. and Said, you know what? We have two great, beautiful, healthy boys. We are very happy with our life. It's gonna be okay. And three months later, we were pregnant with our third child. So there was a lot of issues that happened during that time. And that's where the dot, dot, dot comes in. So your, your youngest, not, not another boy. A girl. A girl. Yes, Mia. Actually, she'll, she just turned 12. So uh, it's been 12 very energizing but um, interesting years, things that we did not know were coming when we were pregnant with her. And um, the book, of course, tells a lot of those issues. But she, um, she, we thought we were going to lose her during the pregnancy long before we knew about her being born with a cleft lip and palate but I have negative blood. And what that means for a woman is you have to receive the Rogam shot when you are 28 weeks pregnant and after you deliver every pregnancy. Because if not, and the child that's growing inside of you has positive blood, then the antibodies in, a negative, in the negative blood will try to push that foreign object out of the body. Wow, I didn't know that. And so if you have negative blood and you're a woman, pretty much you're gonna know the first time you go to your first OBGYN appointment because they're gonna test your blood because it's very serious to know that. And um, I did not receive the Rogam shot after my tubal pregnancy. So when I got pregnant with Mia, the fear was because both my boys, Reed and Cole, were positive blood that uh, my body was gonna start pushing this baby out to try to rid my body of it. Yeah. And um, through prayer, and a lot of heartache and a lot of doctor's visits. We found out uh, a few weeks into the pregnancy, I guess probably around 18 or 20 weeks, that nothing was going wrong with this pregnancy. So the only explanation was the one to seven chance, percent chance that this baby had negative blood and it did. So it wasn't supposed to. Odds were against this yeah. baby having negative blood, Mia. So that's and a good it, thing. Yes, it yeah. was wonderful because my body did not see it as a foreign object. Yeah. So it, it basically just took care of it like it would any pregnancy, like I would have received if I had received the Rogam shot. So you're expecting a normal, healthy right. child? Right. After we, after we went got through that milestone thinking, okay, this is all good. Yeah. Then at 31 weeks gestation, I go in for the fun ultrasound. It had just come out, you know, the 4D yeah. uh, wasn't, you know, too long in the making, so everybody was excited about that and get to see the baby's face for the first time. Yeah. And Jace didn't even come to that ultrasound because he was like, eh, just bring me the video when you get home. Third you child know. been there done right, that, right, exactly. <laughs> right. But I had an audience. I had my mother-in-law, Miss Kay, was there, my, and two of my sister-in-laws, and I had Reed and Cole there. It was before they had gone back to school. So we were all there ready for the, the big reveal of her face. 
and it was revealing. That's when we saw the first time that there was something not quite right yeah. in that face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what, what do you do between then and birth? Is there anything you can do? Well, there's, a, I don't know now. I can only tell you from my own experience, but uh, no, there's pretty much not because at, at 10 to 12 weeks gestation basically is when the face grows from the outside and comes together and forms itself together and forms all the facial features. So at 31 weeks, it's pretty it's much done. a done deal. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we don't know why she was born that way and why she had this problem. They said, you know, when we started doing research that a lot of it is genetics. Well, I went back through my family history and even back through Jace's and there was nothing there mm -hmm. that showed that this could be a possibility. So we don't know, we may never know until we get to heaven, you know, and ask God, but we had to accept that and then go through the grieving process, which I also talk about in this book, you have to go through that grieving process. You know, and it's not really the loss of a child that you're grieving, it's the loss of that hope of perfection, the perfect life, you know, with a child born without any disabilities and any problems. Right. But uh, once we got through that, we had to go to work. And that's kind of my personality, my mentality is give me a week, let me grieve, let me figure this out, let me pray, let me cry, don't tell me not to cry, don't tell me I shouldn't be feeling this way and then let me work through it. And then, you know, after a few days, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to solve the problem. So, and that's basically what we did. Once we figured out what was wrong, because I knew nothing about cleft lip and palate, yeah. I had to kind of figure out what is that mm -hmm. and learn as much as I could about it. And once we did that, then we started looking for the right doctors because I knew that we had to have the perfect daughter for our daughter, no matter what we wanted her to be okay, whatever that meant, we right. needed her to be okay. Right. So God just led us to the perfect place, which is actually right here in Dallas. Yeah, which is so, why you're here. Right, right. Uh -huh. You just went to the doctor today. We did today, yes. So, mm -hmm. okay, so uh, now the cleft palate thing, there's a range of severity. Yes, there is. Uh, with the lip and the palate right. and all that. Mm -hmm. On the range of severity, how She's pretty severe, severe she was, was pretty she? severe, yes. There's some babies that are born with just the cleft palate, so you can't really tell by looking at their face. Yeah. Um, there's some babies that are born with just the cleft lip, and that would be a wonderful blessing because it's one, maybe two surgeries, and that's it, they're done. But when the palate is involved, that means the structure of the face itself, which is bone, it's cartilage, it's teeth, all of that is involved, and you know, a child doesn't quit growing for 16, 18 years. Yeah. So it is a long, process, a long journey of trying to just keep up with what that child needs in terms of eating, in terms of breathing, in terms of swallowing, even in terms of speech, which I wasn't aware of when we were first diagnosed with this. Yeah. So she was born in what, uh, 2003? Three. Mm -hmm. How many surgeries has she had so far? She has had seven surgeries for her cleft so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many doctor's visits in? Oh, I can't just, even you tell lost you. Count. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we live four and a half hours away drive. Yeah. So, you know, that's another thing. You just have to get it in your brain that this is your life from now on. Every four to six weeks, you've got to, Every you know. Every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm, make that journey to oh my goodness. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Well, you're almost a Texan now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, right. we welcome you. What's, what's your prognosis? How's she doing? She's doing wonderful. She, uh, as of, you know, right now, she's had three surgeries in 17 months. So this past year and a half has been quite traumatic for her and for our family. So she's done very, very well. Um, I give a lot of credit to the doctors that are here at the International Craniofacial Institute, the Genicoves, and he, Dr. David Genicove, is pretty much on the cutting edge of trying to find new things to make these procedures easier for the child. Mm -hmm and to make the recovery a lot easier. One of the things you talk about in the book is that he came up with something that nobody had done before that saved he her from, from a lot of he difficulty. Did. Yes, he did. He came up, well, what, what happened was, and I do talk about this in the book, but um, she had to have a bone graft, which they have to take bone from the hip and put it in the cleft of the palate because oh. there's a gap there. And so in order for the, all the teeth to be moved into the correct positions, you know, you've got to have all of that filled in. And so uh, when she was born, 
we were told by a doctor that was still at the, the Craniofacial Institute, but he's since retired, Dr. Kenneth Sawyer. He told us that that was the biggie. So when that happens seven, eight, 10 years from now, that's gonna be the one that you're gonna have to gear up for. She's gonna have to go through physical therapy to walk again because they have to take bone from the hip and everything like, I mean, it was gonna be a big deal. So the closer we get to it, the more anxious a mom sure. is about that surgery. And so we're, um, he retired and Dr. David Jenico took over his practice. And he had told me about, I guess when she was seven or eight years old, he said, I'm working on a new procedure for that bone graft that is going to be a lot less difficult in recovery for her. And I remember looking at him and I said, chop, chop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I said, I, I, you need to get that done before it's our time. Mm. And a few months before we did that bone graft, I said, how is that new procedure going? He's like, oh, I, I, it's, it's done deal, it's, it's perfected. I was like, oh yes, but I didn't really understand what that meant for her. So we are in um, the doctor's office the day before bone graft and pre-op things, and a mom comes to me, recognized me from our TV show, and said that her son had just had what they call the distraction surgery. And so I said, oh, I think that we're probably gonna have to have that in about a year is what they're telling us. And she said, I said, how's your son doing? And she just teared up and said, he's just not doing well. He's very emotional, he won't go to school. It's hard to get him to eat. And she said, I have a picture, and she showed me the picture, and it was her son wearing what's called a halo. And it's just a metal contraption over their face and head. And I said, oh my, I said, does he take that off at night, thinking it's something that we had done before with uh, her procedures? And she said, oh no, it's screwed into his skull. Oh my goodness, how long? Uh, I don't know, I didn't get that far. Yeah. I was saved by the doctor coming out the door because I got real emotional really fast, thinking sure. I don't think I can handle this right now. My daughter's fixing to have the biggie tomorrow. And I just said, I'm so sorry, I'll be praying for you. And I hit the door with the doctor. And, but that just haunted me for a long time. Um, the bone graft surgery the next day went extremely well, so well that 24 hours later, she walked out of the hospital. So my Walked. perception of what we were told 11 years before was that she's gonna have to have physical therapy to yeah, walk again and it's to gonna walk. take weeks. Mm -hmm. He had done away with that theory. Oh, wow. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, so I knew right then we were at the right place, which I had known that already, but it just certified to yeah. me yeah. that we were where we needed to be and that he was doing what he, what he knew was best for all of these kids mm -hmm. and always looking. And so. You know, it was just a wonderful sight. In fact, I took a picture of it because Mia was in her nightgown and her coat because it was in January and my oldest son, Reed, were holding hands walking out and I grabbed my phone and just clicked a picture and it's, it's also in the book. It was just a very momentous picture for me and a, a memory. So you're still on an, in an ongoing journey yes. that is, is difficult at times, even with victories like that, mm -hmm. it's, it's still hard. Where's God in all this? Oh, he never left us, never. And you know, a lot of people ask that, like how did you keep your faith so strong through all of this, through all of the disappointments and the heartaches? And at the very beginning when, when we were diagnosed with this, it was difficult. And I, and I talk about this in the book and also in the Bible experience that's gonna accompany this. There's a four week Bible study that's gonna go along with this. And it really tries to pull out your emotions because so many times um, growing up and in, the, in, in other experiences, like I've heard you're not supposed to question God, don't question God. It's like, well, I, but I have all these questions. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's hard to get answers yes, if you don't ask the questions. And I've, I've learned it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to ask why, yeah. why did this happen? And sometimes you might get answers and sometimes you might not. But the, his answer to me was, I, d I never left you. I was here and there is a broad purpose for this that I didn't understand at the time. I really didn't want to accept it at the time. I thought, I don't really want to be used sure. in this way. No, I don't, I don't want my child to suffer, right. you know, in, in any way or capacity. But now, looking back 12 years later, it's easy for me to see how God has not just used me, but how he's used my child to encourage and bring hope to so many people with her condition. So what good has come out of this that would not have come out of it if she hadn't gone through this, if your whole family hadn't gone through this? 
Wow, that's a, <laughs> there's a lot of there's good. There's a lot. There is, there is a lot. She um, is so self-confident. Mm. I don't know what that is like at 12 years old because she is a lot like me now as an adult, you know, not like I was as a child. And she does not let hardly anything bother her. Um, she is getting in middle school, so some of those things are changing a little bit. But most of her life, she's just a very analytical person. It's black or white. So she's like, hey, I had a surgery, dude, get over it. You know, if anyone's looking at her or asking a question, she's like, I had a surgery. Have you ever had a surgery? Yeah. So it's not like she's upset or anything at all. She's just like, this is just the way it is. So, um, in fact, about three years ago when she was nine, um, her daddy has spoken in public, you know, appearances pretty much all of her life and longer. But I had just started doing that more and more since Duck Dynasty. And she asked one time, she was like, when am I going to be able to do a speech like that? Mm -hmm. And I said, Mia, you can do that anytime you want to. And so we sat down on the couch and wrote a speech out together, and she gives it everywhere we wow. go. Mm -hmm. At 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, at nine. At started nine, at nine. Starting at nine. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So you, I mean, this is a tough question, okay? I'm, I'm okay. going to throw this one at you. Because <laughs> you ran up against that age-old question, that question that often separates people from God the most, and that question is, why does God allow suffering? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have any answer? My question is with, my answer is with another question. Yeah. People say, why did this happen to you? Yeah. And I say, why not? What makes us so special that we're going to be able to be absent from any heartache in life? In fact, God promises exactly the opposite. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. This is nothing compared to what Jesus did. And our suffering, just like in Romans 5, it talks about suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. That is Mia's triumph verse because she has had suffering, yeah. much suffering in her life. But she's persevered through every one. This book is full of stories of things that she has said that would blow people's minds. There's one story in here I'll, I'll share with you that, that it's not in this book. But when her surgery happened, the, the bone graft surgery, in January of 2014, we did an episode about it. Stand by Mia was the name of the episode. And so we got some magazine coverage and things, and, and there was a magazine that had the picture of our family on the front. And on the front of it, it said, Jason, Missy Robertson's daughter and her many struggles. And Mia saw that just laying on the counter at our house. And our publicist was there. And Mia walked by and she said, why does that say I have many struggles? I don't have many struggles. Hmm. And just kind of popped her hip at me. <laughs> and I was like, and she just turned around and walked off and our publicist's mouth just dropped. And I said, that's Mia. <laughs> that's she does great. not realize that she, it's her life. Hmm. She doesn't realize that she's been through so, so much turmoil. Yeah, you can see the character that's, that's come right. out of the That's right, the mm -hmm. exactly. And through that character, of course, gives hope to so many people. Yeah, great, great. Great stuff. Uh, your book is available now. Yes, it is. So you can get it. You will be blessed by reading Bless, Bless, Bless. And uh, there's a couple places they can go to find out more about you and mm -hmm. more about the book. I have my own website, missyrobertson.com. And I have a weekly devotional, so I'm hoping people will log on to that and follow that. Some just some short encouragement each week on a Monday. Can't, can't have too much encouragement on a Monday. <laughs> right. And then um, also they can go and learn more about the book at blessblessbless.com. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Sure appreciate your time. And Thank you. we'll continue to pray for you guys that, that she would just, con Mia would continue to inspire people and give hope. And, and you guys are doing it. So thank you for all. Thank that you're you doing. very much.